let's get into it. Yo, what's going on friends? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are all doing well today, sweet friends. I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily series here, of course, on Football Therapy, where I see what's being said around the Blues, giving you my opinion on it, but more importantly, asking for yours. Rio Ferdinand is baffled by Jorginho's inclusion in the Ballon d'Or shortlist. Wow, lots to get into. We're going to listen to his quotes, see what he has to say, then I'm going to reflect on it and give you my opinion on this take by old Rio. The England squad has been announced. Free Chelsea inclusions, including Rhys James, Ben Chilwell, and of course the ever-present Mason Mount. We're going to talk about Rhys James versus Trent Alexander-Arnold, and of course Ben Chilwell versus Luke Shaw as well. Very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you stick around to the end. It's going to be a good video. Get comfortable. Consider subscribing if you're new to the experience and I'd ask you all as a favor to your friend Yannick please do drop a like on this video because it does help me out a lot in the deep dark abyss that is of course the YouTube algorithm. All right then we're going to start off with Rio Ferdinand's comments on Jorginho so let's get into it. I'm going to be using an article from the Metro to cite what Ferdinand had to say when discussing the Ballon d'Or shortlist a smaller group I think about five or six players of course including Jorginho as well as the likes of Lewandowski and Messi which fair enough you might say are favorites but people who know about football and the contributions recently made in the beautiful game perhaps wouldn't say what the heck is Jorginho doing in there not old Rio Ferdinand now before we get into this before I read these comments I want to explain this is not a dig at Rio Ferdinand I mean perhaps a dig at the comments spoiler but not at the guy himself as you guys know I'm not a hateful dude I'm not here to present stuff and report on stuff to create negative toxic feelings but this is in my opinion a silly opinion anyway basically want to say I don't dislike Ferdinand at all I think he's an all right dude and has good analysis every now and again but I just wanted to get that in so let's jump into this article from the Metro and see what's been said the Jorginho one baffles me Ferdinand told BT Sport he's not the best player at Chelsea and he's not even the first name on the team sheet either with Italy pause off the bat it's not saying he's the best player at Chelsea, it's saying he's a great player that's done great achievements in being a very important player on the run to winning the Champions League and being a very important player on the run to winning the Euros as well. And you know, I'd argue maybe he was the first name on the team sheet for the Euros, or certainly close. Many of his Italian teammates would speak about how important he is, so I think off the bat, these comments are already wrong. Listen, he's a very good player, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I don't see how he gets on the list with those players at the level those guys have been playing at. If you look at Chelsea in the run into winning the Champions League, I think Kante was man of the match in five or six of the last games, so it baffles me. Pause. And Golo Kante was immaculate in that run. Correct. Well said, Rio Ferdinand. And that's not to say Jorginho was awful. Jorginho was also very important. But remember, his inclusion in said list is that married with the Euros. So sort of Kante in many ways is moot point. He's won two of the big trophies. I get that. I understand it. But when you're putting him up against those other players, it doesn't really make sense to me. Ferdinand believes Bayern Munich striker Robert Lewandowski should win the award. Quote, I think this year Lewandowski, yeah. 56 goal involvements in 38 games is ridiculous it is Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi numbers true and to be honest I'm actually inclined to agree with Rio Ferdinand here Lewandowski is at the peak of his career by far he's ascended into a new level and he's been incredible and should Lewandowski win the Ballon d'Or I as a Chelsea fan would be okay with that I don't think any Chelsea players have the right to win it I think they definitely should be in the running and to suggest otherwise is nothing short of disrespectful for him to sort of talk about Kante being the best in the Champions League run is disregarding Regarding the Euros, but then he talks about them, him winning said trophies separately in a different point. Really, they have to come together, and therefore, your point about Kante doesn't make too much sense. Jorginho was an integral player to both of these competitions, to both of these trophies, and yes, you can talk about Lewandowski's incredible scoring form and productivity. Jorginho isn't a forward striker. He's in fact quite the opposite. He's an orchestrator of play. To be honest, centre-halves would get more goals in open play than he does who are further back. And of course, for everyone on the pitch would. Had he not been on penalties, 
Jorginho would be the player on the pitch who scores the le least goals, bar maybe the goalkeeper, of course. So to bring in goals and assists for me is absolutely silliness from Rio Ferdinand. I think if you understand the game and you understand the metronomic nature of how open play football works, you absolutely have to accept and approve Jorginho's inclusion in the Ballon d'Or shortlist. And certainly being put up against the superstar players as well in that shorter list which they were discussing at the time. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on that. Jorginho's inclusion. In fact, let me know who you think should win the Ballon d'Or. I think probably Messi or Lewandowski. Lewandowski for the aforementioned incredible reasons. In fact, he got robbed last year when there was no Ballon d'Or because he would have won it so easily. Messi won the Copa America, Copa del Rey last season in what was an absolutely awful Barcelona side and of course still produced insane numbers. That's why for me personally he has to be at the top of Lewandowski. But let me know what you think. Comment down below if you think it should be a Chelsea player, maybe a Jorginho, maybe a Kante. Obviously I'd be elated if any Chelsea player won it. Comment down below and we're going to move on and talk about some other players. Cool, so in this section of the video we're going to reflect on how Mason Mount, Ben Chilwell and Rhys James have all been called up to the England squad. No surprises with Mason Mount. He's a go-to guy for any manager in terms of being an intelligent systemic player. The fact that he got uh, you know, a hat trick and an assist in the Premier League doesn't do him any damage. He was always going to be in there. Now, Rhys James hasn't always been turned to by um, Gareth Southgate. Certainly neither has Ben Chilwell as well. They've both been called up for this international break though. But so have Luke Shaw and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Stiff competition for both roles. Certainly Trent Alexander-Arnold sometimes can look out of this world. His delivery, his range of pass, his weight of passes are absolutely incredible. But he's not that much of a well-rounded right back. And I say that half as a biased Chelsea fan of course, but also looking at him analytically. An incredibly talented young man on the ball. Hey, we tried to play him in midfield. Didn't really work though. Does work with Reese James when you play him in midfield. Just saying. What I'm alluding to here, he's incredibly talented, but sometimes can prove a weakness in that Liverpool side in terms of getting behind him. Off the bat, if someone asked you who's better at defending as a fullback, Reese James or Trent Alexander-Arnold, of course, every single person will naturally say Reese James. Reese James is good at getting back, recovering, defending, better at defending one-on-one. -on -one. He's got immense strength for Reese James. Players bounce off him all the time. He's very strong and aggressive, but also it should not be forgotten that Reese James has also immaculate delivery and immaculate crosses. Maybe at the moment Trent's flexing more and looking better and performing better in that sense, but you can't forget this is what Reese James has done his whole career. So, if you're looking for a robust fullback that can just drop in into an international team and not let the team down defensively and play better systemically as a plug-and-play player as opposed to Trent Alexander-Arnold who of course is an immaculate player in terms of talent but works so so well in that Liverpool setup and in many ways is an unconventional fullback not so plug-and-play is he so for me Reese James wins but who knows, Trent, a recency bias, a, a superb recent performance from Trent Alexander-Arnold. Gareth Southgate might drop him in, but is he susceptible to recency bias? I don't know, we'll, we'll see soon. Anyway, let's move over to the other flank and talk about Ben Chilwell versus Luke Shaw. Now, of course, last season, Luke Shaw was pretty darn amazing, certainly evolved like more under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, probably one of the only players that's actually developed underneath him. But that's probably largely down to him just not being Jose Mourinho who was constantly putting him down. So without him, he was allowed to flourish and develop. It was frustrating for Chelsea fans not to see Ben Chilwell feature in the um, Euros over the summer. Especially when he dropped an absolute masterclass in the Champions League final against Premier League winners Manchester City. You'd be thinking, damn. But the truth is, Luke Shaw was consistently good for Manchester United, who finished second in the league. And not only that, he sort of vindicated Southgate's decision to keep him over the Euros by playing really, really well. Does that mean Southgate managed it well? Absolutely not. He should have given Ben Chilwell a chance to play in maybe that game against Ukraine or bring him off the bench. And you know, there was times he should have played him and that obviously affected Ben Chilwell, but still Shaw was immense. Now, fast forward to this season, has Luke Shaw been as good as last season? Absolutely not. Has Ben Chilwell been good? 
since he's come back into the team after Marcus Alonso, yes, he's been very good. Now I get it, there should be a certain amount of loyalty in an international football. Some may say Southgate's got too much sometimes, but if he puts in Luke Shaw, I wouldn't really have any qualms with it. And to be honest, if he starts Trent Alexander-Arnold, it's not a tragedy, they're both excellent players. But to be honest, I think Reese James is a more of an obvious choice than perhaps Ben Chilwell at left back. Although genuinely moving forwards, especially considering who they're being coached by in terms of their club side, I think moving forwards in the future, both Ben Chilwell and Rhys James should be England's starting fullbacks. They'll have more chemistry with each other, switching the play and all that kind of stuff, playing with Mason Mount in the middle. And they're being coached by Thomas Tuchel. They're not being coached by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Even Manchester United fans would admit Solskjaer is no way near as good a coach as Thomas Tuchel. Anyway guys, let me know what you think about the fullback and international situation. Comment down below. And for all of you who've watched the video to the end, I really, really appreciate that and I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Uh, you can show support by dropping a like on the video and uh, I'd urge you guys to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thanks again, friends. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outlined in chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.